Welcome. Today I'm going to take a look at the Unit 2 Test Part 2 and walk you through how to answer those two questions. The first is a question about earthquake waves and the second is about plate boundaries and what happens when plates either move apart, move together, or we have a hot spot um, and the geologic features that form in each of those. So let's go ahead and take a look at the questions together. I'll walk you through how to answer them and you can turn in your assignments when you are completed. Okay, so question one um, says that a seismograph station is located 2,000 kilometers from an earthquake's epicenter. Explain the order that the S and P waves will arrive at the station by using the characteristics of the waves. So first we need to take a peek and look at what those two different waves are. I've got that information over here. Let me expand this so we can focus in on those waves. Um, there are two types of waves that we learned about and focused on in this class. The first are the P waves. P waves move in this compressional way, so they either um, if you were like taking a slinky attached to the wall and pulling it or a spring, they move in this um, compression direction. So they compress and they expand um, and they are the fastest waves. So when the um, epicenter, which is above the um, focus of the earthquake, the place in the, the ground level where that epicenter occurs, and the seismic station is located some distance from that epicenter, the P waves are going to reach first. Those, those are the compressional waves and they are uh, moving the quickest. So they will reach that seismic station wherever it's located most quickly. Next up would be the S waves. So when we look here, the S waves follow more of a curved path. The S waves take an actual kind of wavy pattern um, and they move a bit slower than the P waves, so they arrive at a slightly different time. Now, depending on how far that seismic station is from the epicenter of the earthquake, there will be different timings at which the S and P waves will arrive, but P waves will always arrive first. Think of that as primary, S waves as secondary, the S waves will arrive next. And so that information should help you to answer question one. Question two asks you to complete this chart about the geologic features that form from each of the different plate boundaries. So here are the different geologic features. Here are the different plate boundary or um, special circumstances, in this case, hotspot, uh, where magma can erupt from the, the center of a plate, um, not at the edge of a plate, and we have to define which of the features form at which. So we're going to put an X or a mark or check in each of the boxes that correspond. So let's take a look first um, at an oceanic, oceanic convergence, and we'll kind of jump around a little bit, but we'll complete each column in the chart together. So in an oceanic, oceanic convergence, like we see over here, we have an oceanic plate. It tells us oceanic crust, and we have another oceanic plate over here. And let's see what things are forming. Do we see a trench? And yes, I see a trench right here in that diagram. So I'll go over to my chart and it's not going to let me do it, but I would mark an X here. I'm going to go back in and add that. Okay, thank you for being patient with me. I added some stars to our chart here so we can drop the stars in place. Um, as we identify each feature. So perfect, we have a trench at the oceanic oceanic convergence. Do we have an island arc between the trench and the continent? Well, here is the location of the trench. We have to go all the way over here to find a continent. And do we see an island arc? Yeah, that's exactly what we see. And one example that we talked about in class would be the islands of Japan. We've got two oceanic plates that are converging and this volcanic activity happens because one of the plates subducts underneath the other, and that has formed the chain of islands um, where the islands of Japan are located. So we can put another star in that section. Mountains on the coastal side of the trench. We don't have that here, and so we're going to leave that space blank. A rift valley extending for thousands of miles. I don't see anything about a rift valley here, so we'll leave that one blank. A mountain range with plateau, with high plateau on one side. It doesn't mention anything about a plateau in this mountain range, so we'll, we will also leave that blank. And then a long linear chain of mountains on the seafloor. I think you could mark that one too because we've got this island arc and these mountains are connected to the seafloor. Um, so if you would like to put a star there, that looks great. Let's move over to um, the oceanic continental convergence because I have all of those diagrams on the same slide. So we're going to look here at oceanic. This is our oceanic 
plate and the continental plate is over here. And if we look again at these features, do we see a trench? Yes, I see a trench where those two plates meet. One is going to slip beneath the other and that creates that separation called a trench. And so I'll put that mark there. Next up, an island arc. We don't see anything um, about maybe this volcanic arc here, but let's see if that applies better um, because we don't really have a space between um, the, the ocean kind of area, the ocean coast and the continental crust. So it looks more like this mountains on the coastal side of the trench. So here's the coastal side of the trench and we do have mountains forming there. Let's put the mark in um, down here. And next up, the rift valley. Again, rift valleys come when we have a separation of plates, so we're not going to mark that. A mountain range with a high plateau on one side. Um, we don't see that in particular. We're going to see that um, when we look at the next type of um, meeting, and we don't have a linear chain of mountains on the seafloor. So we're good to go uh, with the oceanic continental convergence. Let's look at the last one, which is the continental continental convergence. I'm just going to move myself out of the way. We have a continental plate here on the left and a continent continental plate here on the right. And when they converge, we don't have a trench this time because we don't have that kind of area of the ocean to uh, fill in, but the land is going to have some formations there. But we do have a mountain range with a high plateau. And remember, that's one of the features that we looked at. So let's move this over. Mountain range with high plateau, and that's on a continental continental convergence. We didn't get a trench. We didn't have an island arc. We don't have a coastal side because it's just two continents converging, uh, and we don't have a seafloor. So that mark works there. Now we need to move on to look at the divergent boundary. So we've covered the oceanic oceanic convergence, the oceanic continental convergence, and the continental continental convergence. Next up, we have oh, two divergent plates. So I'll move myself back. And we've got a area here where the plates are separating, where those plates are coming apart. And it's forming a mid-ocean rift, or a um, this is where we see that mid-ocean ridge formation. And so magma is coming up out of the center and pushing those plates apart so they are diverging. And that is going to create for us at this divergent boundary not a trench but a rift valley which extends for thousands of miles. As, as long as that divergent plate border exists then the, um, the rift valley will uh, occur where that pushing apart is taking place. And then finally, let's take a look at hotspots. So a hotspot occurs not at the border between two plates, but a hotspot occurs where um, magma starts popping up or jumping, you know, kind of erupting out um, from beneath the crust. So this hot mantle layer really melts. It um, becomes less dense as it does that melting and it pushes upward and it can break through the crust. It does that in the middle of a plate somewhere, not at the edges of a plate. And so for our hot spot, we need to find what's going on there. We don't have a trench because we don't have plates meeting. Um, we do have island arcs forming but it's not between plates. So the island arc that we see is this like long linear chain of mountains on the seafloor. We don't have um, two plates meeting, so we're not gonna have that high plateau formation. We don't have the rift valley that occurs where plates separate, and we don't have a coastal side because we don't have a trench in the first place. So that information is everything that you need to answer the questions uh, one about the S and P waves and question two about the geologic features that form at the different plate boundaries. And if you need any help with that, feel free to reach out to me. Um, keep up the great work. Take care.